Emilio, the Honey Badger, Urutia! Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour, episode 56. And today we got a big one. We're joined by my former coach, former MMA fighter, extraordinaire, college wrestler, business owner now, previous head coach of the Tiger Muay Thai MMA and martial arts, and now the new head coach and part owner of the world-renowned Bang Tao Muay Thai MMA and fitness out of Bang Tao, Phuket, Thailand. Welcome to the podcast, my brother. Thank you, MLO, Mr. Dosen. What a what an introduction. Uh, G Hick is I back. What's up, brother? Yo, how long has it been? When's the last time I saw you? Um, I'm trying to think now. You left during COVID, right? Yeah, was that the last? I haven't seen you since I left since Bangkok. I haven't seen you at all, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No way. So a lot yeah, has happened, doggy. Been... When did you officially? Oh, yeah. Yo, so now you're officially in the. You're officially. The head coach of Bang Tao MMA and Muay Thai. How's it going over there, man? And you're the first guy that I get from Bang Tao. Uh, it's going well, brother. It's going well. Uh, the gym is, um, we opened in April and um, I had left. I didn't plan on leaving as early as I did, but, uh, you know, they kind of found out at Tiger that I was leaving last, last May. And uh, when I got back from America, that was it. And yeah, so we opened the gym in April. Um, and yeah, gym's going great. We've started expansion. Um, so we're expanding the MMA area, the fitness and Muay Thai area, and we're building a brand new, uh, a brand new Muay Thai and boxing area. Um, so a lot was, will change. Um, the gym already looks awesome, but yeah, a lot is going to change uh, here. By January 1, it should be totally different. And by January 1st, you've already, guys, you've already made additions and it hasn't even been your first year, full year open yet. And you've already have to expand. Yes. Yeah. So like the classes uh, every month have uh, been getting bigger and bigger. And, um, you know, over the last like two months, we've had anywhere between 25 and 45 people, uh, you know, in my class and kind of the same for the jujitsu class as well. Wow. And what's your schedule like right now? What classes are you teaching in Bengtao? Uh, right now, I just teach one class uh, in the afternoon. Frank and I teach it normally. Um, of course, he's gone with Israel right now. But uh, we teach one pro class in the afternoon. But it's kind of just all levels. Um, but once the expansion's done, I will split it back into two groups. And we'll have a, a beginner intermediate uh, MMA class in the morning. And then we'll have the same exact uh, class in the afternoon, but just for uh, professional fighters and you know people with a higher level. So, uh, but you know, normally I come in eight o'clock. Usually, like right now, uh, Loma just signed uh, for an, her fight coming up in February in Korea. So I'll be holding pads for her, and I'm training uh, Jada Ketley fights this weekend on Saturday uh, here locally in Phuket, and then uh, I go to one at the end of the month with Main Bo. Oh, Main Bo, you remember her, right? Yeah, she's, girl. yeah, she's good, man. She fought Tiffany, I think, her last fight. Yeah, so I've been uh, I've been training her and uh, yeah, look to go out to the Philippines and smash out a win. I haven't been to a one event since the beginning of COVID. Wow! So you're going back to you going to the Philippines and you're going to the Korea for the UFC for Loma's fight. Yeah. Loma's yeah. fight is in Korea. Yeah. Who's she fighting? Um, hold on. Uh, I just saw the I, Elise Elise Reed Elise Reed. Wow. Hey, you've been busy, so, man. You've been busy since you guys opened up full board, huh? Yeah, it's been great, though, you know, because during COVID, when I was still coaching at Tiger, four times I left and four times I had to come back and do a two-week two -week quarantine. So being able to travel freely now is – um, and just, you know, be back like this. You know, you know this life, Emilio, like being able to go somewhere, corner a fighter, check out, you know, a new country or do some cool stuff. And then just come back all in a week. But during COVID, you know, it was um, definitely not like that. It was like, go check out somewhere where you're just sitting inside all day, fight, and then come back and sit for two more weeks in a, in a hotel room. So times have changed, and, and I'm excited to, you know, to be back out traveling the world and, and smashing out fights. 
Oh, that's crazy, man. I didn't think about that, bro. During the COVID, you stayed pretty busy during the COVID. That's the one thing about the MMA scene. Everybody shut down, the whole world shut down, but most of the MMA promotions won championship, UFC. You cornered a few fighters in UFC in the smack middle of COVID, right? Yeah, I was on Fight Island for Loma, for Khalil. Uh, I was there multiple times. Dan Hooker, one time I cornered Dan over in Fight Island. and Dan um, fought. Uh, yeah. Oh, he fought in Fight Island or Poirier. He where did he fight Poirier? Or that was in the nah, Apex. He, he fought. He fought uh, Chandler in the co-main event of uh, of McGregor versus uh, Poirier. McGregor Poirier was in Fight Island. I'm forgetting about that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy to think about like the time frame. You know, like sometimes I'll find myself saying like, "Oh, was it before or pre-COVID or during COVID?" It's, it's insane to think about what uh, what the world's gone through. Man, talk about it, bro. You Not many people have the experience that you had leaving and coming back two weeks. So people don't know, right? To get back into Thailand, if you left the country during the COVID pandemic, to get back yeah. into the country, you had to do a 15-day hotel ASQ quarantine stay where, like, you stay in a hotel yeah. where they bring, yo, we brought you food one time. I forgot who you went to go corner where me and me and Harmony brought you some stuff in Bangkok. Remember? I th yeah, I think I was, uh, I think I cornered Khalil and that's who it was. Yeah. Man, you don't miss those days, huh? Hell no. Oh, my God. I did one. I did one of the two-week quarantines. Where was your hotel? Where you're always in a different hotel, right? So the first two times, uh, the first time, for instance, like Loma and I, it was the first time I left in October of 2020. And we stayed in this really nice hotel. They had like a Benihana's downstairs that you could order from. Oh, that's um, good. But we didn't really know. You know, it was our first time. There was no balcony no window to open so like we had to stay in there for the first three days and then after a negative test we were allowed to walk for an hour a day or run and then the second place i went to was after a rafa fought moicano and we stayed in like a service hotel it was like kind of on the outskirts of bangkok but it had a balcony it was still like a little room but it was so much better you know i watched like the the big komodo dragons like the lizards like in the like creek that was next to the uh, hotel but then the third and the fourth time I stayed in this this place, uh, both times I stayed in the same place. And it was in Bangkok, not far from Tong Law. And it was like a studio. It was like on the ninth, 10th floor, something like that. I had a great view, like nice balcony, great view of the city. Uh, I had to sign a waiver saying that the hotel wasn't responsible if I decided to jump off the building <laughs> uh, because of the balcony. Yeah, but it, you know, it was great. It had a separate bedroom, a separate bathroom, a couch, uh, like a kitchen table. It was, it was the amount of space just for your peace of mind. It was much better. Yeah, you had like good. Yeah, good energy to move around and stuff. The balcony is key, bro. When you're locked in the room for those hours, that's crazy. We gotta have that fresh air. Yeah, that's crazy. The one that I had, we didn't have a balcony. But when I got the pass, like after the one week or whatever it is, when you can start going outside, um, right. they let me go outside. I was going outside twice a day. And nobody said nothing. Like, I would call them at Damn. night. Yeah, that was cool. Like, I would go out at Once 6. Once a day for us. Yeah, that's crazy. And they didn't let you, like, bring stuff. You know, like, when you brought me food that time, that's when it started getting more relaxed. But the first the first time, first two that I did, you couldn't do that. And, hell, by the end of it, I, you know, I knew people like Woody. I was dropping beers off for him and stuff like that. I was, like, smuggling, like, bottle of whiskey and stuff. Like, it was really strict in the beginning. Yeah, there was levels of the quarantine, bro. So when you guys first did it, I remember I bought you some stuff and they wouldn't take it. Like we brought you some brownies yeah. and stuff. They said, no, it's been opened already. The rules got more light and more light, but the rules are crazy. Remember, you could only get 7-Eleven food. It's like, what the hell, man? Like you can get COVID yeah. from cooking on the, on the, it was nuts, bro. Right. The, the, the common sense was out the window. I was, yes, I was telling was. some people, I remember that my last stint in Bangkok, I was in the hotel I remember Bangkok was on a little, we went into like a second lockdown as soon as I got there. Bro, I seen some lady in my building, she had gloves on and they were spraying, they were putting hand sanitizer over their gloves and cleaning their gloves. I was like, oh man, this is getting wild, you know? The scare was real, bro. <laughs> but the quarantines got easier and easier. When I was in quarantine, um, my student brought me like, man, they brought me everything. The uh, Tammy from the, from the, from the, um, she had a little shop, the little uh, vegan shop. Yeah, yeah. She, she's from Bangkok Fight Lab. She sent me a bunch of stuff, a bunch of treats. And then my student, they brought a bunch of beers in the bag. And then the staff was really cool. But I was like towards the end of the COVID, you know? Right. Man, a lot has changed, George. So not only are you the new coach of Bangtown MMA and fitness, 
You also got a new addition to the family, my man. Congratulations, my brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. I mean, so you got two baby girls now, man. The, the and and oh, uh, I have a, a son. Ando's a boy. Oh, you have a son. Yeah, the, the most recent one is a son. So, I thought you had a girl yeah, this whole I think time. People were like, people were like, because we named him Ando. People were like. Because it ends in an A, I think. They oh, think my God. Girl, I swear yeah, to God. Like, my bad, dog. I'm such an idiot. I thought that was a girl good. named too, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. You got a boy, bro. Oh, fuck yeah. Dog, you got half and yeah, half. That's the, oh, that's... I was going to say, bro, all my fighter friends are cursed. They're like, yo, you're a fighter? You don't get a boy, bro. Like, you, Alex, that's O'Shea me. got I two boys. Sure, I thought for sure that I was going to have another girl. Like, my wife called me and just said, like, oh... Congrats, you're having a son. And I was like, no shit. Because I, I just, I knew 100% that I was going to have another girl. But uh, yeah, I had a boy. Uh, so how what's the age difference now? It's a pretty good difference, huh? Like three, two or three? Uh, so uh, he was born on uh, October 12th. And uh, Nada was born on October 29th. So almost four years. Wow, so she'll be a little bit bigger. She's gonna be able to take care of him too, you know. She'll be a good ass. Yeah, she'll she be just, the best sister, bro. She just turned four uh, the other weekend, like two weekends ago, and uh, yeah, we like we had to like really watch her in the beginning when we came home because she'd be trying to like pick him up and yeah. you know, I was trying to explain like, hey, baby, you can't, you know, his neck. You have to be careful. It. It's not a toy. But nah, she's all good now. She probably loves him, huh? She's always taking care of her brother and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing, though. Damn, so October 12th. I can't even believe it was. that was real fresh. That was just not even a month ago. She's not even 30 days old. Yeah. How old he. was she? How, oh, he. How old was he when you went to Abu Dhabi? You, and you just came back from Abu Dhabi, right? I was going to talk to you about that. You cornered yeah, so Top we, Noy. We, 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 yeah, we had him. We had, I knew for a while that you know Top was going to fight in October in Abu Dhabi on that card. And so, like, when I was in America last week, with Loma, she was at the, you know, the doctor for the ch weekly checkup. At that point, towards the end, it's like almost every week or bi-weekly that you go to check. And uh, the last time that I went after Loma had fought, because when I was there with Loma in America, you know, she said, oh, we'll have to schedule when to do it. Because my wife had to have a C-section because uh, the first time her blood pressure was too high when Nada came. So they did a C-section. So that's what we had to do again. So when I came back. She, the doctor was like, these are the days when I was like, I, you know, I travel for work. I have to leave on this day. And it was like the 17th or 18th. And he was like, okay, no problem. You can pick this day, this day, this day. And we just picked what day we wanted to take him out. And, uh, or as, as my daughter and Nada says, when you're going to cut the, when you cut Anda out, mommy. And we're like, it's, it's not cutting him out. But yeah. <laughs> I was a C-section too, dog. So. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah, but it's nice. Oh, so it's nice. So it's nice and planned. You're ready to go. Boom. Ready, ready to go. Boom. Yeah, it was just like in and out. Boom, boom, and done. And it's fast. Uh, it was fast. The recovery is like, yeah, it was really fast. And there, but I knew like more what to expect. The first time I was like really nervous. This time I wasn't really that nervous. It was just like, yeah, we, you know, I already knew what was going to happen. Um, but yeah, my wife's awesome. She understands what I do. And uh, so the day that she got out of the hospital, the next, like, we went home and stuff. And then the next day I had to leave to go to Abu Dhabi. But my mother-in-law was here, so she's been helping. That's great. Oh, that's beautiful. And last year you were home. Last year you spent, you were home last year for the holidays, right? You took Nada home. That was with, uh, you guys all went to uh, um, America around this time last year, right? Well, my daughter, Nada, and my wife. And they went to, they flew like October 25th or 26th last year to America. Yeah. And it was supposed to be for six weeks. But uh, we kind of knew that Loma was going to be fighting at the end of the year. So uh, my wife extended the stay uh, two times. And um, yeah, so we, uh, she stayed there for like over three months. And then after Loma fought, if she fought on the 20th of November, my birthday was the 21st. So uh, I just flew home to see my family, my mom and dad, and uh, the rest of my family. And of course, meet up with my wife and, and daughter and stayed there for like eight days and then uh, came back to Thailand. Wow. Yeah, you've been busy. Yo, you've been traveling, my man. How many passports have you been? Have you been through a few passports already since coming to Asia? Uh, I've had to get one passport since I've been here and I'm probably going to have to get another one within the next year. That's a lot of passports in just a, it's less than a decade, dog. Those things are good yeah, for like 20 years, time, you know? Yeah, the first time, like when I was at Tiger, 
back then in 2015, I think it was, I had to get a new one or 16. They just added like 40 pages to my passport. But now they don't add pages anymore. So, it, yeah. Oh, they don't it. add pages? Uh, Damn, my, fa my first passport only had a few pages. My second one has a lot. But I think if I go back to Thailand, I'll just order a new passport. So that way I can get a fresh start, you know? There you go. My other passport has a lot of stamps. I got to make that trip soon and check out Bang Tao, man. Yes, you do. All right, so check it out. Oh, this oh, this is going to air when the fight would already have happened, bro. So Bang Tao MMA is going to be holding a few champs, dog. So you got Yuri Prohoshchik, right? How do you say his last name? Is he he did he spent some time with you training for Glover Teixeira? When he Yeah, Prohoshka. Yuri Prohoshka. Yuri Prohoshki, right? He was training with you guys for for um Glover, right? When he fought when he won for the title, when he fought for the title? Yeah, he came like he didn't do his whole camp, but he did like 5 weeks with us. Uh what his manager Tim Simpson, we all know, uh, and he just kind of made a group with my brother and Woody and I, and said, uh, "Hey, we want to send this guy out. You know, can you help him?" And of course, yeah, we uh, wanted to help him. And uh, just professional, very professional, super nice guy. Um, and his team, his coaches, their you know his management, we know well, and his coaches, we got to know, and they're just awesome guys. And um, what his main coach, his head coach, so he has a wrestling coach. And then his head coach is his striking coach. And he's a former Muay Thai fighter. He used to fight in Thailand uh, back in the day. So he, you know, he loved being here. So it was, uh, it was good to have him, yeah. Yo, good dudes. I met him in Vegas when, uh, when we went to go watch Alex and Izzy fight yeah. in Vegas. And he was there because I guess, oh, because they're all managed by the same guy, you know? But he was just right, cruising yeah. around when he had a broken hand. It was just, oh, it was just after his fight. You know? But it seemed like a super cool dude. You would never even know he was like the champ, dog, just walking around just like nothing, you know? And sometimes Bro, they would have the garments on. Sometimes they'll dress with the garments and stuff. You seen that? Right. Yeah, he's he's a very uh, intricate guy. Did you see where he like went and stayed in a room in like dark darkness for like three days straight? No, I didn't see that. I haven't even looked. When was this? Was yeah, this recently? He, yeah, Prohaska, like in the last like month and a half or two. You should Google it later. All right, I'm gonna check into it. I'm gonna look into it, dog. Man, so congratulations, bro. Loma just signed a new contract with the UFC. Is there another UFC? Is she still the only tie, uh, signed UFC fighter right now for their UFC? Yes, she's still the only tie. Hopefully, Top Noy will be the next one, but we had a little setback. Uh, but we, uh, yeah, he's back on the horse training. And um, yeah, he just had that fight was two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Uh, in the first minute, you know, they had trained together before. And uh, in the first minute, Top dropped him. And damn. Uh, you know, he just lost focus. I told him after the fight, like, bro, you can't, you have to focus every minute of every, you know, every round. And, uh, you have to have a sense of urgency, you know, like he got choked after he knocked the guy down and then hit him and kicked him a few more good times and then got taken down off the fence. And he just didn't have a sense of urgency, you know, cause it's like I told him in training, he does the same thing sometimes, but he, um, you know, he needed to fight the hands and, uh, and, and shake and move a bit, but uh, yeah, he failed to do that. So he learned a lot from that. You know, that one's going to sting a lot, and um, he knows the the opportunity that he had in front of him, and he just kind of had a brain fart. And uh, you know, that's a position that he's got to get better in. And all around, like people think, just because he's a you know former Muay Thai fighter, he doesn't have a good ground game, but he actually does. Um, but he just had a brain lap brain fart and uh you know didn't do what he should have done in that moment and have that sense of urgency to get him off and get up and get away uh but yeah he's all right man he's he's been training jujitsu every day since he's been back which is great um you know alex helps him a lot with his bjj and alex is now in america for the fights and stuff so uh one of my good friends eric is here eric spicy former ufc fighter he's here just helping out uh with some jujitsu and stuff while alex is gone and um yeah uh I, you know he's gonna keep upskilling and it's a, just a matter of time before he you know he gets in we got to get another winner too yo top's born for it man like you said and like with this with what's good with top is the jujitsu and the grappling that's all learned you know that's just time on the mat that's just mat time eventually that's all gonna come yeah. he's still young he's got the you know what i'm saying he's got the heart of a lion dog there's no quitting him and he's like, like the, the my favorite, my favorite Thai saying, not scared, you know, the motherfucker ain't afraid of nothing, dog. Yeah. So like everything else can body be. Body no saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the body no saying, dog. <laughs> 
And he's not, yo, he doesn't care. So, like, um, the wrestling, he just needs to fall in love with the jiu-jitsu, right? Like, uh, that's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Little things like the that. The thing is, is, like, his wrestling is good and his, his defense is good and his grappling is good, you know? Sometimes I'll see him in submissions. I'm like, where the fuck did you learn that? He's like, peace I look YouTube. Yeah, he will go for some crazy calf have... slices and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just, like. You know, he just in training sometimes he spends too much time because he's comfortable not getting submitted and stuff. And uh, you know, I try to emphasize, listen, you know, if this happens in the fight, you have to have a sense of urgency. You have to get up and get away or sweep him as fast as possible, you know? Like every second that you're down there, you're losing. So Yeah, you gotta have that or yeah, when you get back hits the mat and same thing with jujitsu guys, they'll get comfortable just not getting tapped out, but you gotta be able to like pop up out of there because every minute right. you're on your the back, days you're losing, dog. people off your back like easily or you know, those yeah. days are long gone. But yo, we're the ever is changing because also the days of taking somebody down and winning with wrestling is dying out fast too, bro. What yeah, you think? Yeah. You saw the Peter Yan fight? What did you think about that this, the Peter Yan Sean O'Malley fight overall? Oh, Speaking man, of takedowns, that one. right, bro? That's crazy. This guy can't get yeah. a break. Poor guy, man. Yeah, Yo, it's, um, it's nuts. Yeah, it's shit to see, but I mean, I think everyone, for the most part, around the world, you know, thought that he that he won. Um, but it's crazy. Peter's a champ. He's back training already. I'm sure, and he'll come back stronger. Yo, what's amazing is Peter's like 16 and 4, and he only has like one legit loss. He has that one loss in ACB that we all thought he won, and he rematched the guy. Yeah. He's got the knee against. And the rest are the, shit. And the two knees against. Uh, the, uh, the knee against Aljo, okay? And then the, for the Aljo fight, I thought he won that fight too, bro. Like Aljo. If you, yeah, if, me too. Based on the court, if Sean O'Malley won the fight versus him, then he won the fight versus Stoller, Sterling, bro. I never thought about that. Yeah. Oh man, that's crazy. Yo, how hey, was look who it is? Who we got in there? Hey, hey speaking of the devil, he's already been on a few times, dog. Sawadi Cup. Sawadi Mai. Look at that. <laughs> Thai guy speaking Spanish. Thai guys, I'm, the, world to? the Thai guy is speaking Spanish, and I'm speaking Thai to him. That's gangster. I love it. Hey, how was I like your mustache, buddy? Yeah, mo uh, mustache November. You feel me? I gotta. I have the shave though. I'm I'm a little bit behind. Though. I gotta get on it. I like it. I like it. Yo, how was that? Hell yeah! I'm gonna. It's gonna be nice and thick in a few weeks. Yo, how was Abu Dhabi? Were you able to go to the UFC fights at all or no? Yeah, I'm such a idiot though. I went to the fight, so obviously Volk wasn't fighting. So um, you know, I we went. I went with the. Uh, Went with Volk and, and Tariq and Joe and uh, everybody to go to um, – to, we went to, like, one of the uh, – the, um, one of the mosques in, uh, in Abu Dhabi, uh, which is, like, the biggest one in the world. So that was pretty cool to see. And then uh, we went out – we went to the fights that night, like, Volk, his cameraman, Ash, uh, Shay. Good to see Shay again, Tariq. We all went – or Tariq was working, and then um, – like Alex sat cage side with Joe as coach. And then, you know, all of us had pretty good seats, like close to the floor, went to the VIP room, like had some drinks, food. And uh, yeah, to be fair, because I had top fighting the next day, I left fairly early before midnight, you know, and the fights weren't done until well after midnight. Uh, but there were good fights. Yeah, it was a good it was a good weekend. Uh, the hotel where Top Noy and all of the road to UFC fighters where we were staying was right next to the UFC hotel. So I, we'd go over every morning and have breakfast with Volk and that. Um, and yeah, and and it was just good. It was good to see Volk, good to see Shay and Tariq and Joe, like all the boys. Um, and I even put Volk in, in Top Noy's corner. And uh, I saw that. Yeah, it was, it was good. That's awesome. Well, if we would have won, I, you know, thinking about it, how cool to have the, the current UFC pound for pound and champ, you know, corner you in your fight. And um, yeah, unfortunately it didn't go our way, but, um, but nah, it was good. It was a good weekend outside of, outside of the result of Top's fight. You know, we learned a lot, but it was, um, it was a good weekend outside of that, you know, to see all the boys and to, to see the fights and just be around, you know, a big event. Yeah. What type of, what type of, uh, what weight is Top fighting at? 125? Or yeah, one, 125. 125. Does he have to cut weight or is he yeah. pretty light for that weight class, you think? Yeah, no, he's he's been working with Woody. You know, he's gotten stronger and we want to continue to get him stronger. Um, he can, he's can. he got a little size he can put on, but uh, he cuts, you know, 
five five kilos or so. Damn, hey, and you got that girl, the Korean girl. Is she fighting? Is the Korean girl fighting this week? Is she in America fighting with uh, Izzy and them? Yeah, so she, Gian, after her last fight, she went back to Korea and she tore, uh, I can't remember, she she did something for one of her legs um, and she's been doing some rehab. So, uh, yeah, she's, so she went, that's the reason. She went to America so she could use the PI and she'll train that syndicate uh with with john wood who's you know coached her and cornered her many times that i would say that's like you know more of her her gym um but we love her she's a wonderful girl hard worker um good fighter she's been on some shit in split decisions and um uh yeah i you know i'm excited to see her to be able to go home and fight in her home country and um uh, yeah but she's definitely you know using uh the ufc pi in vegas to help with her recovery oh i got you Yo, that's dope. Have you you've been to Korea a few times, right? How many times you been to Korea? Five or six, probably. Did you go with the Jew and Joe Ray that time? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Damn, you went to the Korea with the Jew. That's crazy, yo. Yo, you've yeah, been to him and, and Yasube. Oh my God, what a trip, dog! You've been in the S. What a trip. The level of trips you've gone to from like from our trips and China trips to like now you're in the UFC, dog. Now the trips are a little bit a little bit smoother sailing, huh? <laughs> yeah, a bit different, a bit different. It's funny, bro. I was I was telling somebody that story the other day about when you and I fought in China. It was my first time. There's actually a Chinese girl that's here at the gym training. Um, she's just like a normal customer. She does fitness and that. Um, but we were talking and she's from Chongqing where we first went. Um uh, and that was the first time I had ever been, you know, outside of America. Like, of course, I went to Thailand, but the the, the second country I'd been to. Uh, and I was telling somebody about what it, I was telling her about what a trip it was, you know, for my first time being out of the country and going to China. Uh, just what an experience it was. And you and I fighting in that. And it's funny. Yo, that was some gangsterness, bro. People don't even know how. I mean, it's a little bit different back then, bro. You fought like the number one guy in China on two weeks notice, mate. And, you yeah. know, was, and then you know it's funny, dog. I fought like two weeks. Uh, we both took the fight on real. We both took the fight on like yeah. two on two or three weeks notice. You know. Remember, we had to go to we had to go to Singapore to get uh, get our visas, but we got ten year visas. We and got then, ten year uh, visas, and we, we became the China plug. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you got the ten year with me then. That's right. Yeah. Yo, and when yeah. we got the ten years, that's when I became. It was so easy. That changed my career, bro, because we were able to fight all the time, bro. People were easy to yeah. give me I, matches. Well, I was telling somebody else about that the other day. It's just like back then, like China was the spot. Like you could go any weekend, any weekend you could go and there'd be tons of shows around the country and you could get a fight. You know, it was great. Yo, you can go, you can go. It wasn't and great stay. going there to corner people, but it was great. Yeah, it was great because the money was, they always paid the money would they pay you in USD and uh, you can go like fight one time and then you meet a promoter and the guy will be like, yo, you want to stay? No, you can fight all, you can fight every week there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we came in a golden era of Thai MMA and Asian MMA. Like, the Shield, Alex came, like, a little bit earlier than us, but it wasn't, like, the golden era. Yeah. Like, it was still in the development. But when we got there, all those fight opportunities, we met Syat, the plug. We had a bunch of different yeah. Syats all over Asia, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. It was uh, definitely a different time back then. Yeah, and they, but they, you know what they do? They always bring uh, foreigners in on, like, weird situations like us. Like, I had just fought two weeks before. So I had a good little run, man. I fought on Full Metal Dojo. I went to two and zero, and then I became yeah. I got to three and zero like in within three weeks because I fought in Full Metal Dojo, and then I fought like two weeks later. And I remember when you came out. Yeah. I remember when you came back from the fight, dog. You had a hard dog. You came back. You were like, yo, you were saying like, I'm never taking a fight on short notice again. And I'm like, yo, chill. Yeah, because I was dying. I, I know. Smoking shisha and drinking beers in Patong like a week before. So you're telling and, the promoters. Yeah. You're like, I was drunk at the Patong two weeks ago. And I'm like, yo, shut up. I'm about to go up. And I was drunk with you. Because <laughs> we were, it was after my fight. I remember I saw you. I remember that. We were walking around. And they around. changed your opponent like the day before, right? Yeah. Well, like the guy that I would, thought I was fighting, he was fighting somebody else. I think when they saw my ears and shit, they did the Oski Woski, you know? <laughs> yeah, but you still guillotine him. I mean, he's in the UFC. Yeah, I got that guillotine, dog. Oh man, that was dope! What a good trip, times. dog! And we met the good um, times. we met the striker dude too. That was a good trip, man. Boosie, Boosie, Boosie. Yes, I was dog. Just talking about it yesterday. Ah. 
Yo, yeah, China was like, a, listen, I've had some, I've met some good people in China. Another time I went to China alone with no corner and the guy that I ended up staying with ended up being real cool, like training in TriStar. Like he was a, like a Canadian guy. I ended up like, so I've gotten lucky, man. I've gotten super lucky, dog. There's been some hell trips that we've heard of. Have you been on yeah. any like hell, hell trips, you think? To age to China? What was uh, like the hell trip? Nah, I, they're all just experiences, even if they're a hell trip. Yeah, one time I went to Corner Jake Hume, flew into Beijing, put me in a car, drove me six and a half hours to another city. He was trying to get a visa. And then later that night, they told me, hey, your fighter is not coming. And then they were like a little suspect about flying me home. I was like, I'm not staying here the whole week and my fighter's not here. And then like, I got a wife, I got a kid, fly me home now. And they took me home the next day and flew me back. Uh, but that was a that was a rough trip. But even that, like in itself, there's always like, even if they're rough trips, it's still like a life experience. Like going to India with uh, with Musa and Brov, Radcliffe when they fought, and in Guwahati, India. And we rocked up in the hotel, and the bloke was like saying like oh your, your opponents pulled out and then they started laughing he was like and the other guy never even fought before <laughs> uh yeah it was a trip mate it was a trip yo what were you hey, at any point in rap cliff's fight were you comfortable I, I was like i was gonna say at one point were you comfortable in the fight with Radcliffe when he just killed what do you do he do like a flying knee ko of the guy it was crazy i can't eat something like that yeah it was, <laughs> they ended up getting like two indian wrestlers um, because their original opponents fought for some other promotion and under contract, they weren't allowed to fight or something. But to be fair, like, like I like Indian food, but after like two days, I was just going to get like pepperoni pizzas from the local Domino's. And uh, there was a, actually a Laotian kid that was there that they had dwelt there. He thought he was fighting Muay Thai, but it wasn't Muay Thai. It was obviously MMA. And he didn't know, so I ended up, like, nobody could communicate with him. So my shit tie was, like, decent enough that I could help him, like, and he could understand because, you know, a lot of people speak Thai. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, quite an experience. He ended up fighting, and he, he was beating the hell out of this guy for, like, a minute and a half. And then the guy took him down, and that was it. He just didn't know what to do. But, yeah, it was what, – what a trip that was. What part of India was that, dog? It was like South India, like Guwahati. Oh my god, Guwahati. Like, I think, it, I think it's northeastern. Uh, it's not far from Mongolia, I think. Okay, and you went with Brov and Musa. Yeah. What a ledge, Musa! Won. I got to get Musa on the podcast. Yeah. There's a Bro, ledge, dog. They they both won. Sorry. No, no. Go Are ahead. There? Go ahead. Yeah, they both won, and uh, Radcliffe stayed for like a month. The guy <laughs> Bubba Jit paid him to stay and work at his gym. Bro, they were like superstars there. Yeah. Like the Indian people were cheering for them and booing <laughs> their own people. It was incredible. And two of the nicest well, the dudes, bro. Two of the nicest dudes. The two of the nicest yeah, dudes. Yeah. Yo, Musa has had some shit ended to the deal, dog. I've been on the same card with this guy when he just always is fighting like the best guy in whatever country he's going to, dog. The first yeah. time we were on a card together in China, he was fighting like some guy that they were like... His name was like the destroyer or something. They were like, you're going to, oh, it was like one, of the, I think it was the Islam guy. Remember there was another guy named Islam that was killing everybody back there, like some Dagestan guy. So funny. I remember when we went to Korea, he fought in Korea and he fought like the, the, the big ass guy in Korea. And then I was cornering him with Will Choke. Every time I see Musa, bro, we have a good, he's from ATL, dog. He's training with Jewel Cow. Yeah. And he's, and he's got mean jiu-jitsu now. He's from the ATL, shorty. Yeah. Yo, when we were with with uh, Frank, I was with, I saw Frank in Jacksonville, and we saw one of your old. I don't know if you were he was your boss too, with the used car, the, the car salesman guy, dog. Johnny, no, it's my best friend. He's like yes. my best friend. Yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. I remember him. You guys were close, yo. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yo, Jacksonville was a good time, man. Yeah. That was my first experience with the UFC. You've had a few now, dog. You're becoming like you're like they see you and they're just like, oh, that's just George now. You're like a fucking. What's the name? You're like a, you're like a, what's it called? You're like a Winkle John Jackson guy now. They you see that they see you way more than those guys. That's crazy, dog. It was, I'm sure it was a cool to see all you boys together in Jacksonville. That was amazing. Like, how cool is that? We all we've all known each other for years from different parts of the world and the country, and uh, to be able to just meet up like you did with them and like Tariq and Shay and I with Alex the other week, like it's pretty dope. 
when I saw the photo of you guys together, I'm like, yo, the boys are still rolling, dog. It's amazing. There's different chapters. Yeah. And we're all in the weird yeah. different chapters. Look, exactly. Shay, but we're staying together. That's the thing. It's not like we just disappear forever and we fuck off, you know? Right. That's right. That's right. Joe Ray kind of disappeared, but he'll be back. Joe Ray still does his daily list. Hey, he, Joe Ray messaged me about a month ago. He'll be in Bangtown in, in, in like two weeks, bro. No, he's coming in yeah. December. So He's a ledge. It's hey, great because Volk's coming in December too, I believe. I know, dog. I'm already looking at flights. I was, and Shay too. Yeah. We don't want to out nobody, dog. We're going to have like some fanboys stalking these people. But yo, yeah, Shay, Joe Ray, and Alex are all going to be in town together. So I'm, I'm going to have to look into that one. I saw, I'm going to see Joe Ray soon. He's going to come down for some bare knuckle fights, yo. Nice. But, uh, yeah, dog. My hey, just been tell good, Joe man. Ray he's killing it now. Tell him to get your flight. Yeah, it's I'm going to shout. He probably would, dog. You're a fucking crazy mofo. <clears throat> Yo, so you're out here in Bangtown right now. Oh, we got UFC 280. That's what we get. So that's what I wanted to speak on. BTW, yeah. that Fruiting Body podcast is really good. Have you done it yet? Yeah, yeah. I did, Woody it? and I did it together, like, right around our grand opening time. I got to get Woody on the pod. He's next. Um, yo, the uh, all right, so we got UFC 281 coming up, right? And you had yep. two athletes, two people have been tra- two people were, pre- were preparing for those fights in uh, Bangtown, right? You got the champ, Zhang, oh, the f- she's number one contender, right? Zhang Wei Li, yeah, former champ, the she former did, champ. Yeah, she did her fight before uh, before Joanna in Singapore, and then she did her fight camp again recently, uh, for this fight. Oh, this is her second camp in Bangtown, yes. She loves it. She, she reckons she's going home for Chinese New Year and then coming back. She, lo- she loves she, it. And she, how was having a how was having Zhang Wei Li in, in the in the camp, man? Oh, I was great. Like before her fight for with uh, Joanna, before a fight in Singapore. You know, she came to our classes, Frank and I, and she did jujitsu in Alex's class, and she did the fitness with Woody. And actually, Woody and like I did private lessons with her for striking, for wrestling off the wall, ground and pound, takedown defense. And Woody did uh, S&C privates with her. Um, she was still a bit shy, but then after she fought in Singapore, she came back the next day and she had COVID. But once she got over the COVID, um, she started coming in. She was, you know, Loma and her train a lot together before this, for before Loma's fight. Um, she trained with Gian. She came in to help Gian do the, the uh, circuit. She's like, you know, she became a part of the team and a part of the family. So, uh, yeah, we obviously are in her corner anytime. And uh, she she quite likes the gym. So it's, um, yeah, it's great. Who's going to be cornering her for this fight now? She's, she's had the same corner for a while. I've seen some of yeah, those guys. Yeah, she has her team. Uh, but because it's a championship bout, uh, so she'll get four. So I think Josh Inger is going to corner her as well. Oh, yeah. I saw Josh on the Embedded. And then uh, Alex was yeah. saying he's staying with Josh. Yeah. How fucking... That is amazing, yo. Hey, that's dope. I love that. Yeah, it's awesome. She's got good energy, right? I love her interviews. I love yeah. reading the way she talks and her interviews. She seems like... She's an friend. incredible... She's an incredible athlete, a great person, and just... She's a freak. That is for sure. When it comes to, like, athleticism, like... Or, like, you can show her something one time and she can do it. Oh, my God. I bet. I remember the first time I saw her, I was in Mongolia with Joe Ray, bro. And then this girl came in and you would have thought Mike Tyson came in. She had an entourage of like 10, but she had the same guy, the same Thai coach, the older, the older guy. She had like a squad with her, bro. And I was like, who the fuck is that chick? And as soon as that chick walked in, I Googled the card. I had to like check right away. And I saw that she was like on a 25 win streak at that time. It was something crazy. She was like a little bull. Though. I was like, yo, some, she's about to wreck somebody. She was the main event in the Mongolia card when Joe Ray fought. So I've been keeping my eyes on her for a while. Somebody. She wrecked somebody. And I was like, that girl. And I remember seeing her fight that night in Mongolia and just the way she looked and the way she was hitting boxing pads with her trainer. I was like, that girl is never going to lose. And then she was in the UFC a few years later. Yeah, she's she's pretty insane girl. That's for sure. Yeah, that was the only way you're going to beat somebody like that. Like, you're going to have to get that crazy kick, boom, two seconds, flash knockout, and that's all she wrote because yeah. it's going to be hard to beat that girl for 25 minutes, yo. Yeah. Didn't she have a real – she had a real close war with somebody. Was that JoJ the first time? Joanna the first fight was, like, real yeah, tight? Yeah, the first time. Oh, for Joanna the title. That, yeah, she had that big thing on her head. She gave that – yo, she killed Joanna twice. Put a seat that, bro. Yeah. She get if she gave her that thing on the head and she hit her with the spinning back fist. And then they had the video of her hitting that in Bang Tao, you know? 
Yeah. Yo, the first year, and you guys already, man, I've already seen you on Embedded like three or four times, bro. It's so good, yeah, man. It's been good, that's for sure. You guys are keeping me relative here in Miami. They're like, yo, you guys, you, you know Bang Tao? Like, I need to get my, I need to get to Bang Tao, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I was a tiger, but that's my boys in Bang Tao. I got a homegirl coming to Thailand now, and I'm going to send her over to you guys. She doesn't train or anything like awesome. that, but, you know, I don't know. How's the scene like in Bang Tao? It's a lot different than Phuket, right? Let the people know. So, like, you guys are... Well, Bang Tao's in Phuket, but, yeah, it's um, it's on the western side of that uh, island. You make a left out of the gym by motorbike. A minute, you'll be at Surin Beach. If you make a right, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, you're at Bang Tao Beach. So, either way, within two minutes, you're at a beach, left or right, out of the gym. Um the gym is, it's already pretty big. Uh, we're doing the expansion, which should be done by January 1st. So it's going to be even uh, more massive. It's going to be very big. Um, and the area here is just, it's a great vibe. You know, the, the people are cool. They're down to earth. There's a big, a big uh, number of expats that live here in this area, uh, like in Laguna and stuff. And there's a lot of stuff to do around here. It's just... um you know, when Alex first mentioned this area, I was like, nope, absolutely not. Don't want to even fucking entertain it. And then my ignorant self came up here for two different weekends. And uh, Big Will showed me around. And uh, I was sold. I was like, man, this is this area is awesome. Get me out of here. Get me out of Chalong. And yeah, I, I now I love this area. I, I feel like angry at myself for being ignorant and never coming up here, you know, before when, when we were still in Chalong. Uh, just because it's such a nice area, and yeah, uh, I can't say good no enough good things about it. So you guys, and you guys, so most of the gyms in Thailand, right? Like when people go to Thailand, most of the gyms are in the Chalong area. If you want to go to Tiger Muay Thai, um, what else do they got now in Thailand over there? Tiger, Phuket Top Team, yeah. like Dragon, Radachai, like all those. There's like two MMA gyms on the street, maybe three, and then a bunch of like Muay Thai gyms and fitness places. Uh, and we're about 35 minutes from there. Yeah, so um, all the gyms are usually in like one center location of Phuket, right? Where people don't know when they come to Phuket, yeah. they think they're gonna be like on the beach and training. But bro, Tiger Muay Thai, the Tiger Road is far, is like thirty minutes from the beach. So we we're telling yeah, them no, like that fitness street is like really cool. You know, we have a lot of times we'll have people that have been training at the different gyms on Fitness Street, as they call it, and then they come up here um, to try this. Uh, it's definitely you know not near those places, but uh, yeah, the facilities are great. Uh, you know, the coaching is good and just the vibe of people that we have here. Like to me, it's one of the most important things, you know, when someone comes up to me and tells me that, you know, thank you. Uh, and that they had a great time and that the, the atmosphere around the gym, like that's very, very, very extremely important to me. And, um, uh, yes, I think we're doing a, a, a pretty good job of just like, you know, we're the way we are is, you know, how we are with customers and, uh, yeah, like, you know, it's cool to chat shit to customers and give them some banter and that. That's what we love. So if you come to Bang Tao, better have tight skin. Yeah, if you come to Bang Tao, you're going to get it. You're going to get it because you're going yeah. to have all the boys there. But it's all going to come from love, man. That's right. That's right. If I, I say that all the time to, like, chat. I'm like, oh, you're so mean. And I'm like, well, you know what? If I didn't mess with you, I wouldn't love you. We didn't care. Yeah, if they didn't care enough to bother you, we wouldn't even be in the, you wouldn't even be in the game. That's right. And the vibe is everything, man, especially in a big gym when people are traveling like that. There's so many people, like, especially, and what I bet you is, like, and I think what we were always good at when we had the boys at Tiger Muay Thai, what separated ourselves from everybody else is that even though we were all, like, yeah, like, pretty legit fighters and BC dudes, there was no egos in Tiger. And I feel like we're going to bring that same thing to Bang Tao, you know? Yeah. Everybody gets treated yeah, the right. same, dog. Whether you're a regular white belt or you're a freaking Instagram model that's or you're right. a UFC fighter, you're going to get the same smoke. You're going to get the same love from that's us. That's right. That's right. No, I tell people that all the time. Like, I don't care if you, you know, the biggest name in the UFC or nobody knows who you are. We're all the same. Exactly. Especially on the mats, right? And you got the, so you got like the four o'clock class. It's currently mixed right now, right? At Bang Tao? Yeah. Yeah, but it's mostly like, to be fair, most of, there's a couple beginners every class and I'll, you know, put them together and stuff. Uh, but most of the time, the level's pretty, pretty high and, and everyone, um, yeah, the, the ones that are, you know, maybe not quite up uh, at the same level as the other ones, I always kind of put them together so that they can help each other. Um, and, you know, we still pay a lot of attention to them. Like, I don't know. If, if anyone's in my class, whether, you know, they're a UFC fighter or it's their first day, 
you know, we're going to help them the same. That's amazing. Yeah, it's dope. You had, um, you had, uh, just, hey, I saw Quentin. Is Quentin transferred over completely or is he like full blown? Yeah, or is Quentin's, he like on the low, low training uh, over there? My bad. I didn't mean out. No, of no, no. <laughs> nah, Quentin, he's been up here now for a couple months. He just fought two weeks ago, uh, the weekend of Abu Dhabi fights. Quentin fought at Bangla Stadium, first fight in quite a while. That's what I was going to ask um, you. Yeah. And, uh, he did great. He, he finished the guy TKO in the second round, like massive amounts of stitches with his elbows. Uh, that he gave the guy. Uh, but yeah, Quentin's like, he's up here now. You know, he came to me and I think he was having kind of a rough time. And uh, yeah, I told him, come up here. And if you come up here, you commit fully and we'll help you any way we can. So it's been great having him here. He's been helping not only, you know, did he just fight recently and win, but, you know, he's been helping Jada with her fight camp. He's, you know, he's been helping. Uh, he helped top before. Now he's been helping Brendan uh Lofney for the million dollars for pfl so uh yeah quentin's doing well brother he's doing well yo he's he'll be a great addition for you guys if you help him he can help you with the coaching and the beginners classes and stuff he's the man bro yeah, he's a good he's, soul uh, he's a good soul yes he is so you got brendan lock when brendan lockman is getting ready for the million dollar tournament in pfl this is crazy you got another one yeah so he fights uh i don't know if it's a week or two weeks after israel and then this weekend but Frank will be there to corner all the boys, and then he's just going to stay for Brendan, and then he'll come back after that. Damn, he's a little all over the place, huh? Brandon, is he training? He's doing. Yeah. He's working with Johnny Boy. He can work anywhere, huh? I guess when you're training for the yeah, million-dollar tourney, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, he's just um, – yeah, he's been – you know, he does SNC with Woody. I've held pads for him a bit, him and Darren Till, and, uh, and they've been coming up and doing drills and sparring and stuff up here and doing some wrestling. So, yeah, he's – um both good guys and uh yeah damn how good so if you go to bang Tao, you got the hickman bros wrestling you're they're going to be training with you and frank right when he's not working with izzy and the champ he'll be in bang Tao. Yeah. he'll you be got, here for a while now you got alex shield on the jiu-jitsu end the black belt holding it down and then you got woody yeah. you got the man bro you got andrew wood and you got peter fornick on the ones and twos right doing the strength and conditioning right now for yeah. the athletes yeah Woody's back. Woody's back in full effect. They see him. He's working with a lot of high level guys, getting him ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, man. Do you ever do? Hey, are you rolling and stuff like that? How's your training, bro? Like, are you doing? Yo, you're a beast, dog. This is the thing, bro. People don't even know, dog. I'm not, Emma. Damn, I, 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 dog. I Let's go, bro. You're too good to not. This is what makes me mad, bro. People don't know you can get off the couch and get it done, it dog. I don't have it anymore, brother. It's official now. I've said it openly. Nah, jujitsu, jujitsu, dog, jujitsu. I don't got it anymore. I just don't have it. So, how old are you? Your, your birthday's coming up. Your birthday's right before, right after mine. You're like a year older than yeah. me, or two years, dog. Fuck. No, I'm I'm a day before you. You're 22, right? I'm 19. I'm 19. I'm a little bit before. 19. Okay, yeah. so you're two days before me. But I think uh, you're a year older I'll be than me. You're 37. Not, you're 85. Yeah, I'll be 37. Damn, dog. and your brother, damn, how old Frank is, 33? Yeah, I believe so. Bro, what a dream, man. I love it, dog. How you guys did it, man. Yo, you and Frank traveling the world. And Frank now, how good is it seeing him with Izzy, seeing him with Frank? Just get I wonder how good Frank gets. You think his wrestling has maintained the same good from, from the same good? Or you think training these guys has got, you think he's sharper or he's like not going to be as sharp as like. Uh, he's at least the same. But he's, the same. no, yeah, he's sharper because he's had to learn like, he's had to learn what, you know, MMA wrestling. Like when he first came to Tiger, I remember making him do like, saying like, yo, you need to be in the boxing class. You need to be in the Muay Thai class. You need to be in the jiu-jitsu class so that you can learn, uh, you know, the difference in wrestling and then wrestling for MMA. And then he did the jiu-jitsu competition, remember? And he made it to the finals. And then he got subbed by Dinky Dog at the 18th <laughs> by Joe Ray. Diggy Dog was not losing that grand prize, dog. That's when right. there's money on the line, Diggy Dog had the eye of the tiger, dog. He was not playing no games, dog. He was coming for that fucking 4K bot, whatever, you know? Yeah, price points will be okay after winning that. <laughs> oh my God, you're living in Phuket when legalized weed happened, bro. Dog, yeah. I don't even know what world you guys are living in. Bang Tao, you guys are the big bosses of Bang Tao. You got legalized weed. I don't even know what world you guys are living in over there, bro. I'm like out here bullshitting, man. What is that like? Yeah, with the, um, what is that like, bro? It's you just like when I moved to this area, it was much more like relaxed and like 
laid back. Like you could buy joints on the beach and, and smoke weed. And uh, even before it was legalized and one time the police were there, but for something else and the guys were like, yo, don't worry. It's okay. And now, now that it's legalized, there's just dispensaries everywhere. You can smell weed everywhere. Not like everywhere all the time outside, but it's just much more like, yeah, mate, it's just like, you know, decriminalized and it's legal and there's probably still a gray area with it, but it's, it, it's all good. It's, uh, yeah, the country is very different now. Damn. Yo, UFC 281. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? You got Izzy. What do you think about Izzy versus Pereira? I think this, the magnitude of this fight is insane. And it's, it's so like, uh, I haven't been this excited for a long time, but, uh, of course I'm riding with Izzy. He's our boy, you know? And, uh, and I like his energy. I like the way he's approaching this fight, the things he's saying. Uh, he knows what's on the line and what's at stake here. So uh, I look for look to him to put on a great performance because if there's one guy that can rise to the occasion and really uh, rule the moment, it's him. Yes, exactly. And the thing that people don't know about his last two fights, the first fight, I thought he won. And the second fight, bro, besides the fucking, yeah. besides that left he hook was that got him, dog on him. He, yeah, dog. I think pound for pound, look, bro, nine minutes compared to 25 is a long difference in the little gloves. It's a long time, but I just feel like his reflexes are going to be on another level. Yeah, and his reflexes, yo, his reflexes are going to be on, on another level for this one. And he yeah, knows he's he can fought, crack like, him. He's fought the best. This is the thing, yeah. It's not like, yo, this guy can't go in there thinking that this guy has no power because he took a standing eight from him, you know? So it's and like. And it's not a kickboxing fight in a ring. It's an MMA striking fight in a cage. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of factors going into it. And it's not like he's going to be shoot. Yeah. I think Izzy's just more technical. I always wondered how he even did so. Like, we'll see. And he's a big guy, bro. We haven't seen that really. He hasn't had to grind in a UFC fight, you know? So no, I think he hasn't. Yeah, I reckon he'll be all right, dog. So wait, so wait, you did some privates right now in the morning, and then you're because you're in the future, dog. I'm in the nighttime right now. Yeah, you so train some uh, people in the morning, and then uh, it is uh, uh it's ten thirty seven here, and my phone's actually about to die. But um, yeah, I been, trained somebody this morning, and now I'm hanging out, and uh, yeah, got some more people to train here in a bit. That's amazing, damn, bro, George. It was good talking to you and good seeing you, my man. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us, bro. Having you of on course, the Honey Badger. You were the second guest we ever had. I got to get Woody back on. We're just I'm just recycling all my guests, dog. You know what I mean? I love it, brother. But times are changing. Look at you. You're killing it in the comedy. You're doing the podcast. You got all kinds of other stuff in the works that we can't talk about. I'm proud of you. It's crazy, You're right? You're killing it. And I've enjoyed the talk, too. Yo, um, real quick to finish it off. How good was it having the Wheeze back? Oh, it was great having Riddell back. He, we used to call him the angriest kind of live, but... He's I don't happy think now. He's not angry anymore. We'll just nah. give that title. We'll pass that crown to my brother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, nah, it was great having him back. Uh, you know, I got to hold pads for him and stuff. And for me, that's, uh, you know, I always enjoy that because uh, it gives me a chance to really upskill because Brad's one of the most intelligent fighters uh, on the planet. And uh, he's a wealth of knowledge and he's a really good teacher as well. So not only did I get to learn from him, but he really gave back and, uh, you know, taught taught a lot of stuff to the students while he was here and, and really gave a lot of his time. He's a real team player. He's the best training partner, bro. He's a guy that he can kill you, but he's not going to kill you when you train with him. You get better training. Yeah. I get better training with him because I'm not worried about getting laid out. I'm just worried about getting better, dog. Like, this yeah. guy had the like. I remember one time we were drilling and I kept low kicking him too hard. And he's like, yo, stop low kicking me so hard. And then I fucking did it again. He's like, just one kick, dog. One foot. Boom. And I was like, ah! <laughs> I miss That's him so awesome. much, dog. That's my dog. Yeah, I, saw, I get to see him twice. We get to spend a bunch of time together in Jacksonville. Bro, when yeah. we were together in Jacksonville, I had these guys rolling the whole time, bro. We were just fucking drinking. Oh, oh man. And then in, in, in Vegas, he was more in the zone fighting, and then he lost his fight. But then we hung out in the barbecue after, and he was all right. He was much better, you know? Yeah. But he and he really loved the shit out of Bangkok. He was training, I mean, with you guys, right? Training in, in Phuket. Yeah, he... He loved it. He's he's uh he had a good time, and I think it was good for him. You know, change up the, change it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't like he was here on a holiday. Uh, of course, being here, whether you're fighting or not, is always like a holiday. But we um no nah, man, he trained hard. He wrestled with Frank a lot. We did a lot of pads. I drill. I even drilled with him uh two or three times. He asked me to do it. 
in the mornings and uh, I haven't done that in years. And again, you know, it was good for me to be able to upskill and learn some new stuff. Um, but, you know, I wanted to help Brad. And uh, yeah, he's an incredible dude. He's an incredible fighter and an incredible person and coach. And uh, yeah. Great coach. Great coach. One of those guys, like you said, that just make you nervous. And I've cornered him in China and shit. Hell pads. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. It's great to see his evolution, dog. He's going to get yeah. this one down. This is a good fight for him, bro. This is a great fight. I like the way it's, fight. it's, it's a dang fight. dangerous fight because Mokano is good on the fucking... He's got some slick jujitsu, bro, so he can't get caught slipping he's, on the ground. Yeah, he's good everywhere. He's good everywhere, but it's and a He's great got good striking, bro. The guy's long, and he has a good jab, so he's like, yeah, this is going to be a great fucking fight for them, bro. It was cool because I cornered Rafael against him when he fought Mokano. So when I was you know, with Brad, it was cool to be able to talk and chop it up about different techniques of what he does and things like that. I was going to ask you, when you, yeah, you were in quarantine with Rafael, with Rafael one time, right? You cornered yeah, Fazeev when he fought Morcano in the Corona. Bro, I was helping yeah. him get ready for that fight with Frank, bro. Dog, you know what's yeah. fucked up? I got a chip in my tooth from training with him, bro. He put me in a guillotine standing, and he didn't get it, dog. Relax, but he fucking picked my feet up, and then, like, I was trying to do my guillotine rollout, hey. and then I chipped my teeth, dog. And motherfucker, if he wins a bonus, dog, he's going to fix his tooth, dog. But how good is that? He people don't even know how good his jujitsu is, bro. I was just talking to my boy about that Yuli on the podcast because he was talking about how Fazeev that he's a big fan of both of them, Riddell and Fazeev. And I was telling him how fucking yeah. fucked up pissed I was when they fought each other. I was doing comedy yeah. that night, I was on a showcase. I loved it. We we're all doing our dreams, dog. I was performing comedy, and they were both. I was watching the fight on my uh, on my phone on Fight Pass, dog. And I was like freaking also, out dog just like ah bro that was such a and it was such a razor thin fight to the very end dog man. damn For dog because sure. he picked up that tail on where he was leaning bro it's just like two geniuses bro going at it that's the thing too yeah. early way too early in their career i was so pissed that they had these guys fighting each other you know yeah. it was like gamera and armand that fucking guy armand's good yeah. bro fuck yeah. they're both great yeah i can't believe islam is gonna have to have a I wonder who's next for Hoffa, dog. Because you see, he always fights, bro. When these guys fight each other, they always fight this. Oh, he's going to have to fight that guy, Jalen Turner, dog. That's a dope fight. I don't know who they'll give him. I think they'll give him somebody different. Yeah, they're Hopefully actually a little higher rank. He just beat, yo, he just beat, oh, yeah. Jake, Jake Gagey don't want that. He's too, yo, he's he's not as smart enough to beat Hoffa, bro. Agree. Agree. Brother, Anyways, I got to go. Push, yeah, we're pushing up on an hour, dog. My bad. Yo, Georgia, I love you, doggy. Where can the people find you? Bangtow MMA? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Look at that. I love it, dog. All right. There you go. Yo, I'll see you soon. See you, brother. We're going to see you on the next soon. Episode 56. We're out. Peace. All right. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Yes, brother. <laughs>